Bola, everyone. I'd like to talk to you today about the value of a talking point. The talking point in corporate communications, which is where I spent the last 20 years of my career, is like the lowest common denominator of a message. It's the most complex strategy simplified. It's the most tricky issue simplified. But importantly, it needs to be concise, authentic, and the truth. So when my husband and I decided to start our own business, go in it 50-50, start a little cafe called Weta Coffee. I have to admit, I was pretty nervous. I was extremely insecure about my lack of business experience, and I drew from my husband's uh, confidence more than anything, him having business in his family. So we set about starting our business, and as Google told me, I really needed to start with a business plan. So I sat down and tried to write a business plan, and I really wasn't feeling it. I tried, I just could not get it right. So I did what I knew how to do. I started writing talking points. The first talking point relates to what we believed would be the point of difference for our business. We were bringing in award-winning coffee from New Zealand to Fiji for the first time, and we were pretty excited about it. In looking back on our eight months of business, I can truly say that this talking point has grounded a lot of our decisions, from whether to introduce a new food item to the cafe, uh, to whether we needed extra waffle mix on that day, you know, the answer would be yes, because waffles go great with coffee, or does that food item complement the coffee? It really helped to focus our attention on our core product. The next talking point is related to our belief in environmental sustainability and operating our business accordingly. As a tiny little cafe at the corner of a mobile service station downtown, not much seating space, it would be purely grab-and-go. So everything would be takeaway. So my husband and I made a commitment not to hand out any single-use plastic. Pretty difficult when that's all anyone knows how to do. So we did some research and we looked into biocompostable packaging that we could import, found some. This is, it was new for our market, by no means is it mainstream in more developed markets, and I can understand why. This coffee cup landed cost about $3. You could purchase a similar coffee cup, plastic lid, plastic lined, for about 30 cents. Didn't make traditional business sense, but we made a commitment to carry that cost for the customer. There's no way that we could pass that on. Uh, the market just wouldn't accept it. So we, we took on that, that cost into, onto ourselves because we believed it was important. But we did commit to implementing some positive change, or at least trying to make some change. This packaging was incurring over 50% in taxes when we imported it, which is why it was so expensive. You can probably guess what I did next. I started writing talking points about the importance of this sort of packaging to our market. And I gave it to our staff at the front line. Little did they know that they wouldn't be coming to work just to make coffee these talking points would inform their conversations with our customers. MPs would walk in when Parliament was sitting down the road for their coffee. Great. Great opportunity to have a conversation about the importance of biocompostable packaging. Journalists soon became interested in our approach, so we obliged if they wanted an interview. We also soon started meeting other like-minded individuals who were passionate about 
cutting down single-use plastic. When the Fiji government announced in their last budget that biocompostable packaging could be imported with zero duty, by no means can we take the full credit for that. But we certainly believe that we played our part. The next talking point relates to a family approach. This is a partnership. As I said earlier, my husband and I went into this 50-50, joint directors, co-founders, and we wanted, and we, I believe that started within the family. We had 10 years of marriage and four children by the time we started our business. And I reflect on a time when our two older girls, then six and seven, came home confused. Mommy, Daddy, we just learned something at school. The teacher said that Daddy is the head of the house and Mommy should support him and obey. I was shocked, but not shocked if that makes any sense. But I'm forever grateful that my husband jumped in and gave them a bit of a lecture <laughs> about why things were different at home. We believed that these things were a little bit old-fashioned, and we just did things differently at home. At home, Mummy and Daddy were both the head of the house. So in essence, we took that across to our business, but very soon encountered opposing views and actions. The first that I'll recall is when we went looking for an accountant. We needed an accountant before setting up the business, uh, so we went to one of the global accounting firms downtown that we probably couldn't afford. <laughs> Met with this extremely professional young woman, very professional young man, told them we needed a small business package. They committed to getting back to us within the week. I gave them my business card. The email from that global firm landed in my inbox, addressed solely to my husband. I have to admit, I was kind of seething. <laughs> but I composed myself and I called the accountant back. And I asked her, why didn't you send me the proposal, the quote? And she said, I did, I copied you. So I tried to control my tone and simply called out the bias in her approach. She was apologetic. To be fair, I don't think it had even crossed her mind. The next scene is my husband and I shopping for a vehicle for the business, primarily for my use. Every single salesperson shook my husband's hand and talked to him about the vehicles available. He'd say, well, don't talk to me, it's for my wife. And then they'd engage. In fact, he asked one of them, why didn't you shake her hand? And the salesperson said, that, that would be really rude. So I'm very conscious that these kind of behaviors are deeply ingrained in culture, and change will take time. So my point really is, if you feel passionately about that approach, simply demonstrate it and call it out. Our lawyers, love them to bits, feel like I've spent way too much time in their office since we started our business signing documents. Every time we'd sit down to sign documents, I'd ask them, why is my husband's name listed first? They'd laugh, we'd laugh, we'd get on with the job. They never really answered me. But a month ago when I received this email, this letter from them, I realized they'd been listening and they put my name first on the letter, which is cool. But, I mean, they could have just said we list names in alphabetical order. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I realized that by simply calling it out, I'd planted a seed, made them think about doing something differently. In closing, my message to any 
aspiring entrepreneur to even an established entrepreneur wanting to do something new. Before going into your new venture, why not just put that business plan aside, put the budgets aside, projections, numbers, and think about how you would describe your business as simply as possible to someone you met on the street that you hadn't seen in years. Make sure that your talking points are brief, authentic, and the truth. Write your talking points down, say them out loud, and simply get on with business. Thank you.